Hello students, this is a brief lecture on grass organisms. You will come across this term in the topic of protein production and purification. So let's begin. What is this grass? Grass basically is an acronym for the phrase generally recognized as safe. As you all know, various food items available in the market contain substances and chemicals commonly called food additives which are regularly reviewed and approved by the US FDA, Food and Drug Administration. However, FDA has released a list of substances which do not require its approval for every food item as they have been by default considered as safe. With growing advancement in biotechnology, a number of consumable products are synthesized using various organisms. In this context, FDA has prepared a list of organisms which are recognized as safe by the use of various companies to produce consumable products without FDA's intervention. These organisms are called grass-listed organisms. So instead of remembering all these technical terms, all you need to remember is that grass organisms are the safe organisms to work with. As they are safe, hence they should be non-toxic, non-pathogenic and should not produce any antibiotics. Now let us see what is the use of these grass organisms in biotechnology. The commercial production and isolation of proteins is usually done in a microbial culture or plant or animal source by a process called downstream processing. As we have already studied in recombinant DNA technology, to make a recombinant protein, a gene is isolated and cloned to an expression vector. Now, as most of these recombinant proteins are for human therapeutic use, but these cannot be extracted from the humans directly, these are produced in organisms listed in the grass list, organisms such as bacteria, yeast, fungi, etc. These recombinant proteins have provided important breakthroughs in biomedical biotechnology. The first recombinant protein used in a treatment was the recombinant human insulin, which was prepared in Escherichia coli. Amazing, right? The, since then, the recombinant protein industry has rapidly grown. Nowadays, a number of recombinant proteins are being used for disease curing purposes. These include recombinant hormones, interferons, interleukins, growth factors, tumor necrosis factors, blood clotting factors, thrombolytic drugs, and various enzymes for treating diseases such as diabetes, dwarfism, myocardial infarction, congestive heart failures, cerebral apoplexy, and a number of other diseases. So by now you all must have understood what exactly these grass organisms are. Now let us see some examples of these grass organisms. Number one is obviously the Escherichia coli, the favorite one for all the researchers because it is the least expensive, easiest and quickest expression of proteins can be carried out in E. coli. Next we have certain yeasts like the Pistia pastoris. The two most importantly used yeasts are the Saccharomyces cerevisiae and this Pistia pastoris. These yeasts can produce high yields of protein at low cost. Proteins larger than 50 kilodaltic can be produced. Signal sequences can be removed and glycosylation can be carried out in these yeasts. At number 3, we have certain baculoviral systems. If you want to produce a protein with post-translational modifications, you would like to go for this particular grass organism. Next, we have certain mammalian cells. Mammalian cells are used to produce recombinant mammalian glycosylated proteins which cannot be expressed in eukaryotic system. The genetically modified animals secrete recombinant proteins in their milk, blood or urine too. Let's see one more example from the plant category. Yes, the papaya tree. 
so these plant tissue derivative enzymes which have application in food industry must also be non toxic and should be the edible plant species for example pepain enzyme is obtained from the latex of the green fruits and leaves of papaya tree which is used in meat tenderization clarification of beverages digestive aids and wound cleaning solutions apart from these there are other grass organisms also which can be used in the laboratories without any hesitation or without any approval from the fda as they are already recognized as safe organisms so students that would be all for this particular topic thank you for watching if you have understood the topic do like the video for any queries or doubts write in the comment section and for further videos like these do subscribe the channel thank you